ವಾಗರ್ತಿವ ಸಂಪೃಕ್ತ ವಾಗರ್ತ ಪ್ರತಿಪತ್ತ ಜಗದ ಪಿತರೋ ವಂದೇ ಪಾರ್ವತಿ ಪರಮೇಶ್ವರೋ ವಸುದೇವಸುತ ಕಂಸಚಾನೂರಮರ್ದನ ದೇವಕೀ ಪರಮಂದ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ವಂದೇ ಜಗದ್ಗುರು ಮೂಕ ಕರೋತಿ ವಾಚಾಲ ಪಂಗು ಲಂಘಯತೆ ಗಿರಿ ಯತ್ಕೃಪಾತಮಹಂ ವಂದೇ ಪರಮಂದಮಾಧವ ದೋರ್ಭಿಯುಕ್ತ ಚತುರ್ಭಿರ್ ಸ್ಫಟಿಕಮನಿಮಯೀಮಕ್ಷಮಾಲ ದಧಾನ ಹಸ್ತೇನೇಕೈನ ಪದ್ಮೆ ಸಿತಮಿ ಸುಖಂ ಪುಸ್ತಕ ಚಾಪರೇನ ಭಾಸಾಕುಂದೇಂದುಶಂಕಸ್ಫಟಿಕಮನಿಭಾಭಾಸಮಾನ ಸಾ ಸಾವಾಗ್ದೇವತೆಯ ನಿವಸತು ವಸನೆ ಸರ್ವಸುಪ್ರಸನ್ನ ಸದಾ ಶಿವ ಸಂಭ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಮಧ್ಯ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರು ಪರಂಪರ ಪಾರ್ಥಯ ಪ್ರತಿಬೋಧಿ ಭಗವತ ನಾರಾಯಣ ಸ್ವಯಂ ವ್ಯಾಸೇನ ಗ್ರತಿ ಪುರಾಣ ಮುನಿ ಮಧ್ಯೆ ಮಹಾಭಾರತ ಅದ್ವೈತಾಮೃತವರ್ಷಿಣಿ ಭಗವತೀಮಾಧ್ಯಾಯ ಅಂಬತ್ವಾಂಸಂದಿ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತೇ ಭವತ್ವೇಷಿಣಿ ಐ ಥಿಂಕ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ ನೈಸ್ ಸಮರೈಸ್ ಸಮರೈಸೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಎಸ್ಟಡೇಸ್ ಬ್ರಾಡ್ ಇಶ್ಯೂಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಆರ್ ಟೂ ಕ್ವಶನ್ಸ್ ಟೂ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಗಿವನ್ ಸಮ್ ಕ್ವಶನ್ಸ್ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಕ್ವಿಕ್ಲಿ ಗೋ ಓವರ್ ಇಟ್ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಕ್ವಶನ್ ಈಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಧ್ಯಾನ so i will read the question so that we have the benefit of what is the perspective different people give different views about dhyanam kindly enlighten me whether the following views are correct mere shravanam with concentration ekagrata is dhyanam that is one view mere chanting of god's names with awareness is dhyanam doing work without any expectations and offering the same to god and accepting the result as god's gift or prasada itself is dhyana ya karta ya bhokta whether shravanam is possible without dhyana so all these are set of uh, views i think dhyanam is a, a method because you know if you remember in chapter 6 of bhagavad gita arjuna asks chanchalam hi manakrishna pramati balavadridam tasyaham nigraham manye vayoriva sudushkaram see we are endowed with a very powerful the most powerful apparatus known to mankind known to the world is manas because as i am talking to you i can go to california from there i can go to vaikunda also this is the apparatus which is given to us so what we can do with that is a function of whether the apparatus is useful to us so i think uh, so the very idea of dhyanam is to reduce these vibrations of the mind this chanchala because an uncultured mind will run at the rate of 1000 frames per second or maybe 10000 frames per second so i think the whole idea of dhyanam is can we bring these vibrations you know that is the first sutra also that we see in uh, patanjali's yoga sutra chitta nirodha that is what is required so i think dhyanam is is a uh, tool it is a upasana it is a kind of upasana to 
So the ekagrata is a very nice word which is also part of this view. So many of these views if you look at, for example, there is another view which says doing work without <coughs> looking for results. Definitely it will lead us to a, a way by which we can do dhyanam better. So I think uh, the understanding of dhyanam is can we bring the manas chitta ekagrata. So I think uh, that is what dhyanam is. Uh, given the time I thought I will, uh, you know. So in order to do that, since the mind has this tendency to waver, therefore it is very useful to first focus on something. Because once uh, the mind is trained to use to focusing on something, then many of these uh, objects can take a, uh, uh, either not required or take a different uh, role. So in that way, you know, the uh, idea of dhyanam can be uh, progressed. But I think the ultimate idea is this ch chanchala of the mind can we bring it down. I think that is the biggest uh, uh, idea of dhyana. There is another interesting uh, question which may require a much uh, longer time to discuss. Uh, but it goes as follows. It says uh, human being is the only species that can resort to mass massacre. He is the only unfit in his own society. For whatever might be the reason, Arjuna wanted to avoid war, keeping aside the fact for a second that Krishna is Lord, please answer why should he encourage war? <laughs> he could have avoided. Sometimes I feel Krishna glamorized the world as the war as Dharma Yuddha. There are no theories in the contemporary world su supporting war. <laughs> this is a perspective which requires a much greater uh, discussion. First of all, first of all, I think this war was very essential. There was no glamour here. I want to just quickly give an episode from uh, Aranyakanda, from Ramayana. When this Ravana came to the Janastana, he wanted to take Sita away and he asked Maricha to be the Maya Maricha, come as a deer. The same Maricha came in Ayodhya Kanda, he was ferociously fighting Rama, but the Maricha who came at, uh, in the Aranya Kanda was not the same Maricha. He was a transformed person. While he was very happy to be killed by Rama, See, Valmiki, if you read, you will find this. He was very happy to be killed by Rama. So, on that part, he had no regret. But he had a regret that this Ravana, Ravana is doing something which is blatantly wrong. I think there are two sargas, I think, in which uh, he counsels. In one sarga, he counsels. He says, don't do this. This is not good. And he goes on to give several reasons why he should not do. There is one very nice thing he says. He says... If one poisonous snake gets into a freshwater lake, which is used by the community, the village, there is a nice, that is the only source of water. This poisonous snake got into this lake. He says two things. First, the snake has to be taken out. It's very important. It's a dharma sukshma actually. Don't bring a con. See, dharma, there are what are, what are called, you know, ahimsa paramo dharma. That is, that is sadharana dharma. Nobody says it is wrong. Ahimsa paramo dharma is very, very important. If you use that rule, this snake cannot be taken out of this lake, first of all. Then there is a visesha dharma, there is apad dharma. Dharma is not very simple. Dharma is not at all simple. Application of dharma is not at all easy. So therefore, Maricha says that you have to take, please understand Ravana, this poisonous snake will be taken out. Don't have a second doubt on that. But also understand, when the poisonous snake is taken out of the lake, hundreds of good fishes will die. That is the Prakriti. Hundreds of good fishes has to die. Now, because hundreds of good fishes, is die, fishes are dying, if you don't take this poisonous snake, time will come when the entire village will die. Not only the human beings, 
all the other uh, jiva rashi which are all dependent on the lake will die so you need a much larger lens to look at it in vidura neeti you know this is a very popular thing we know he says if you can save a country a grama can be you know sacrifice if you want to save a grama a family can be sacrifice if you have to save a family one person can be satisfied like this so there are many dimensions like this and arjuna you know just think about it with enormous thing in fact arjuna and pandavas and krishna never wanted to fight a war please understand this that was the last resort they actually went they lost the game of dice this duryodhana did two things he blatantly violated contract to use modern parlance under contract law you should have been arrested because what was the contract 12 years you go they lost the game of dice and there was a contract agreement 12 years you go one year agnyatavasa after 13 years you come back i will give you he had no business but to give it back which he didn't do duryodhana is you know today's politicians are not are no match to duryodhana because the adharma that he unleashed was some like that so he blatantly violated contract second thing is duryodhana in my personal opinion had absolutely no brains because when they asked five gramas you should have disposed them disposed them off with five gramas they asked five houses i mean these are all dramatized they asked five houses they won't give to dramatize it so much they asked the tip of the needle i won't give now you can't have a ruler who is an idiot who is an embodiment of adharma it is like this poisonous snake which has gotten into the fresh water lake thousand good fishes has to die so like that there are many dimensions here dharma sukshma mahabharat is nothing but every turn of the event event is deep very complicated dharma sukshma it's very hard to analyze you know i am not saying my explanation may be you know convincing enough but i am saying so this war is actually a war for dharma because so many people in fact what a powerful argument arjuna makes in chapter 1 i think they are very sensible arguments why war must be must not be fought so coming back to this story there is a blatant violation of contract it's a embodiment of uh, unleashing terror on ladies doing things which ought not to be done and a head of an institution is like that and a person who has uh, actually a right to occupy that you want them to keep quiet they were willing to keep quiet for a very long time and then the even the two times there was emissaries sent to stop the war and nothing happened they wanted to fight the war after everything is done you cannot come you know it is like saying there is so much of problem with the neighboring country we will after we have waited for 60 years now we will finally he thought uh, we have to fix things in place and once uh, everything is thought about and you 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 are wanting to have a war now the commander in chief comes near waga border and says oh there is one poor old man he will die that is not raja dharma i mean that is very unsustainable dharma is all about sustainability dharma's only rule dharana dharma ityagu dharmo dharayate jagat powerful definition dharana dharma ityagu that which alone can sustain is called dharma so what is the sustainability it is not 10 years it is not 100 years it is not even a millennium we are all not even a speck of dust in this yuga so just by seeing something happening 20 years here and there we you know we, we keep shouting and we make our own uh, you know uh, uh, opinions and so on dharma is much deeper sometimes we will clean up everything because there is a much larger larger cause which it is addressing so so those kinds of issues are there quickly i thought i will you know summarize this but it requires much deeper uh, you know, explanation anyway so that's that's what it is we will come back to continue our uh, discussions so yesterday we just saw that arjuna asked two questions uh, two questions in the first two stanzas shlokas of chapter 3 and his question is what is good for me karma or jnana and uh, as i was telling yesterday he was counting within his heart krishna is going to tell him jnana because he wants to actually run away he doesn't want to fight so he asked him that's why i told you yesterday that uh, this arjuna you know to make sure that he never annoyed krishna he changed the terms and asked the question three times in the 18 chapters in chapter 5 he slightly asked differently 
ಈ ಸನ್ಯಾಸ ಇಸ್ ಓಕೆ ಆರ್ ಯೋಗ ಇಸ್ ಬೆಟರ್ ಏಯ್ಟೀನ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಸನ್ಯಾಸ ಇಸ್ ಓಕೆ ತ್ಯಾಗ ಇಸ್ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ಈ ವಾಸ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಚೇಂಜಿಂಗ್ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವಿ ಸಾ ದಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕ್ವಶನ್ ಈಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಗುಡ್ ಆಸ್ ಐ ವಾಸ್ ಟೆಲ್ಲಿಂಗ್ ಶುಡ್ ಐ ವಾಶ್ ಮೈ ಹ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಆರ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಮೈ ಫುಡ್ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದಟ್ ಕೈಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಅ ಕ್ವಶನ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಅನ್ ಇನ್ ಅಪ್ರೋಪ್ರಿಯೇಟ್ ಕ್ವಶನ್ because it is not an either or choice as arjuna thinks the path of karma and the path of jnana is not either or at all although sometimes i was relating how in our personal life we have a similar kind of uh, situations where we also think like that so the question is who should who should pursue jnana so in order to convince uh, arjuna that it is not an either or question krishna has to now shri krishna has to now convince him that it is not either or which means now he has to say who should pursue jnana and then do you have all those prerequisites to pursue jnana or is there any prerequisites to pursue jnana and all these is uh, very very important because this sanyasa which he uses in the fifth chapter and in the 18th chapter in some sense it is to give up giving up is not at all easy it's at all easy to talk about but uh, yesterday i was mentioning a devotee went to ramana maharishi and said uh, can i give up everything and aloof be aloof doing nothing so bhagwan smiled at him and said try for some time chumma irundu paar in tamil in tamil he said chumma irundu paar be like that for some time and see what happens the point is jnana requires a certain preparedness so without preparedness jnana is not going to happen so arjuna wanted to go for look at another thing in bhagavatam if you see there are two very interesting things bhagavad gita and bhagavatam we put together arjuna wanted to renounce activities arjuna is interested in renunciation and shri krishna painstakingly used seven hundred shlokas to bring him the other side that's what bhagavad gita is about work get into the thick of the world evolve that's what he was persuading but in bhagavatam in mahabharatam also you'll see at the end at the end you know before the you know uh, swarga arohana parva the musala parva in musala parva you will see it's a short parva i think five chapters there what happened before krishna's departure all that happens just before that he calls uddhava and to uddhava he said give up all activities that is advice he gave same vyakti called shri krishna painstakingly tells arjuna don't go for renunciation but he calls uddhava says renounce everything and go you think of maya you know maya eva you know there's a very similar shloka like what you see mana adhaya you have the shloka in chapter 12 same similar shloka is there in bhagavatam where he says you think of me and then renounce everything so if you look at this it clearly shows there is some sense of preparedness before we talk about jnana before we talk about sanyasa and so on so that is the issue that we have in stock so with this let us see how krishna so the question is there krishna question is not appropriate maybe not intelligent enough <coughs> therefore shri krishna took chapter 3 4 and 5 to sort it out he talked about karma yoga in chapter 3 he talked about jnana yoga in chapter 4 then the same question was revisited wonderful ideas of how you should understand when you are ready to move from this position of karma yoga to jnana yoga which you find in chapter 5 so that is how the he has done so we'll see how he starts this whole discussion shri bhagavan uvacha shri bhagavan uvacha loke smin duvidha nishtha pura prokta maya nagha jnana yoge na sankhyanam karma yoge na yogina so he shri krishna disposed this question with a very short answer in this shloka so loke asmin loke 
asmin loke pura prokta maya he said it was told by me long back maya pura prokta kim prokta asmin loke dhuvida nishta there are two nishta in some sense is a lifestyle is a way of living it is a way of living he says i have long back suggested two ways two ways in which we can live two lifestyles so to use it in today's word if i have to use in english hey anaga see agha is papa or sin so anaga is an adjective for arjuna oh sinless hey arjuna i have long back shown a two fold path he says jnana yogena sankhyanam and karma yogena yoginam so for those sankhyas who are all those who are after that ultimate knowledge sankhyas are those who are who have a burning desire to know that ultimate that para vidya which mundaka upanishad said para vidya kasmin vignate sarvavitam vignatam bhavati that's what he asked angira sam papracha shunaka so shunaka asked shaunaka he asked what is this ultimate knowledge by knowing it i will be known of everything so he says in the world there is para vidya and para vidya that para vidya that ultimate vidya those who want who are very desirous burning desire to know it they are the sankhyas so for them jnana yoga then he says for yogis for yogis who are yogis yogis are those who are in the path of overpowering their world of duality with them samatvam yoga vichyate is what that's what he said in chapter 2 how do you get that samatva bhava our ability to we have to win the world of duality first world is full of duality that's what krishna has said in the 14th shloka in chapter 2 matra sparsha astu kaunteya sitoshna sukha dukkatah agama paino anityah tam titiksha sa titiksha develop the sense of equanimity those who are in the process of mastering this world of world is full of duality you can write a big dictionary of dvaita good bad i like him i don't like him this is okay this is not okay success failure happiness sadness whole world is full of dualities but i very jokingly say this buy one take one free is not at all a new thing this is vedanta you ask for sukha dukha will be given you you ask for sukha see the, how strange we are we are asking only for sukha but you know the prakriti says ishwara says you ask for sukha i'll give you sukha but buy one take one free so now you know how to handle both so yogi is one who has mastered the art of uh, being in the world of vyavahara but still not affecting me so for them i am specifying something called karma yoga so he says that there is something a path of karma yoga and a path of jnana yoga i have told these two so now it is implicit by saying this he has still not uh, told what is your uh, uh, prescription for you so he needed three chapters to say that but to answer him yes there are two lifestyles two nishtas are there jnana yoga and now so clearly this karma yoga and jnana yoga are not either or and they are one is a prerequisite to the other there are many ways we can understand we have to with sukshma we have to see if you take the entire vedic literature brahmanas mantras brahmanas aranyakas upanishads you take the entire repository of the four vedas what you will find is there is a karma kanda there is a upasana kanda and there is a jnana kanda roughly but surprisingly or not surprisingly what you will find is 80% of the mantras are in karma kanda and upasana the vedanta is a small portion at the end of all these vedas so what is it actually saying it is saying that a bulk of our self evolution is related to karma 
bulk of our this vyakti to flower into a full blown personality which can have that liberation that ultimate joy that ultimate mumukshitwa that we are looking for and the moksha is a but a small part it it is preceded by a very big part so even that itself is suggesting to us that karma is a prerequisite for jnana it's very very important so that itself is saying that that's why you know i am reminded of this shloka in uh, uh, viveka chudamani he says chittasya shuddhaye karma natu vastu palabdhaye vastu siddhi vicharena na kinchit karma koti bihi is a nice it's a 11th shloka in this 580 shlokas at the very beginning shri shankaracharya puts a few important principles before he starts into a discussion so he says chittasya shuddhe shuddhaye karma so why there is so much emphasis on karma in the veda or even krishna is in bhagavad gita is pushing so much of this work work and work next few shlokas are going to expand it in great detail which we will see but the point is chittasya shuddhaye karma the greatest contribution that karma can do is to make us a karma yogi and what is who is a karma yogi chitta shuddhi mind must become like spatika our thoughts must become like spatika crystal clear without any stain and krishna says that will happen only through work otherwise it is not possible that's what shankaracharya also says as he says chitta se shuddhate shuddhaye karma na tu vastu pal labdhaye you don't get that ultimate liberation through karma but then this is required this is very very important to do it so therefore this question do i need karma or do i need jnana is not a good question a better question could have been under what condition i will get jnana and i have a, have i satisfied all those conditions and if i have satisfied those conditions please allow me to pursue the path of jnana this much he should have asked but then as we know bhagavad gita is not a conversation between arjuna and krishna it is a proxy for us they are putting our problems on the table it is war and all that you keep aside everything that is being discussed we can connect so this is our dilemma that we have to resolve because there are a lot of people are saying no no all these are not required we can do that you know we can say to we go to the path of uh, you know thinking so many issues there are, we have our own confusions so that has to be resolved so this chapter is all about saying under what conditions you become a karma yogi so you become a karma yogi then we'll talk about jnana yogi so that is the subject matter which sri krishna is going to take us through this uh, uh, chapter so this shloka is puts in place a quick answer very concise answer just to tell him there are two things but i need to explain to you in great detail so you need to ask are you a jnana yogi or karma yogi but there are people who complicated with you know you can say no sir is there a bhakti yogi is there a raja yogi then you can say is there is there, is there so many different types of yoga including a power yoga and all that so let us not get all those here i think uh, what it is saying here is that there is a nishta that we have to go through there is a lifestyle we have to evolve for ourselves and once you are clear about a relationship between these two lifestyles many of arjuna's questions will go so that is why he is putting these two uh, ideas now in some ways this jnana yoga and karma yoga is also if you connect it in a different way it is connected with our ashrama dharma see this ashrama dharma is a great idea see varnashrama is a beautiful two dimensional matrix there are two dimensions the varna is a dimension at a society level but not withstanding in which our varna we are there is another dimension which is called ashrama an ashrama dimension is meant for evolution of any individual no matter where is he on this dimension you be any or in any of these varna it doesn't matter but in each of the varna you can self evolve every self has to evolve that is a charm of our thought the charm of our thought is every individual must evolve 
and for evolving is this ashrama dharma see the word ashrama in sanskrit actually means a temporary parking place it is not a permanent place to sit actually that is the meaning of the word ashrama one meaning of the word is uh, so this brahmacharya this grihastha ashram and then this vanaprastha and this sanyasa now if you look at this karma yoga a, a, a full blown karma yogi is one who would have led himself to perfection through what is called brahmacharya grihastha ashrama and vanaprastha he is the one who is a karma yogi he would have he would, he would have achieved a state of perfection which these ashrama dharmas are say whereas a person who has been able to transcend even beyond that will get into the, the sanyasa which is the last so it is not that in in one one birth we are all have to exhaust all the four it is a long trajectory which has been told to us we should understand what is the meaning of these ashrama dharmas what is the trajectory of evolution that has been broadly told and we can get there so in a way it can be also related to that a full blown personality who has succeeded in this brahmacharya and grihastha ashrama and this vanaprastha is one who will automatically get into jnana yoga he, he will not ask these questions chapter 5 he says it so well this question will not be asked nobody will ask this question this very question is a you know sort of ignorance sri ramakrishna paramahamsa says that a bee will keep making a lot of noise until it sits in the flower once it sits on the flower the sound is gone because it is now enjoying the bliss so that is what it is the very question that somebody i'll ask like this shows that this person is still not evolved because evolved person will not ask question <laughs> questions will dissolve it is it is good to ask questions because there is a path but i am saying a time will come when the questions will dissolve as ramana maharishi very often says question question the questioner that's what he says questions will dissolve so these questions are indications that we there is a lack of clarity and arjuna is asking it on our behalf so let us see how sri krishna is laying out some very wonderful ideas of what is your path to be a karma yogi what are some of the things that you should do a karma yogi as i was telling yesterday it's a very interesting word there is a karma and there is a yoga so a karma yogi is now bothered i mean you know concerned about karma so now now we have to talk about then what is this work why are we doing this work what is expected of this work where is this work taking us all these if somebody can resolve with absolute clarity then that person is going to become a karma yogi because all his doubts are you know resolved things related to work so that is what krishna is taking us through the set of shlokas that we see in the following verses so we'll see the next one na karma nam anarambat nayishkarmyam purushoshnute ಸಿಂಧಿಂಗ್ಲೈನ್ ಅನಾರಂಭಾತ್ ನೈಷ್ಕರ್ಮ್ಯಂ ಪುರುಷ ಅಶ್ನುತೆ ದಟ್ಸ್ ಅ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಲೈನ್ ದಿಸ್ ದರ್ ಆರ್ ಸಮ್ ಬ್ಯೂಟಿಫುಲ್ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ನೈಷ್ಕರ್ಮ್ಯಂ ಸೊ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ನೈಷ್ಕರ್ಮ್ಯ ಸೊ ಸಮ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಮೇ ಥಿಂಕ್ ದಿಸ್ ನೈಷ್ಕ ನೈಷ್ಕರ್ಮ್ಯ ಈಸ್ ಅ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಆಫ್ ನಾಟ್ ಡೂಯಿಂಗ್ ವರ್ಕ್ ಆರ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಇನ್ಆಕ್ಷನ್ ಆರ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ಲಿ ಐ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದಟ್ naishkarmya is what i call as a state of worklessness when you are working an experience of worklessness as to i have not done any work in fact in chapter 4 there is a 18th shloka where he 
articulates it so well. He says, Karmani akarmaha yaha pashyet, akarmani chakarma yaha sabuddhiman manusyeshu. There is a shloka like that. Naishkarmya is a situation in the, I mean, let me explain it in some detail, but I am quickly putting things on the table. Naishkarmya is a state, a mental state of worklessness. That is what he says. So he says, without starting work, without engaging in work, you can never reach a state of a mental state of worklessness. What I mean by that is, work will not bother me anymore. What is this mental state of worklessness? It means, work will not bother me anymore. This is the pinnacle of achieving perfection and doing work. The ultimate goal for us to when you engage in work is, work should not bother me. Work bothers me in every conceivable way. I do a small work, somebody does not say thank you to me. I am very upset. In fact, I, there are several varieties on that. I do a work which is not good, but I think I have done a great work. But then you are not acknowledging, I am feeling very upset. So that is foolishness. <laughs> Second variety is, I really did a good work. I did a very, very critical work. You did not thank me. So I am upset. Sri Krishna says, even that is foolishness. In chapter 13 he says, there is a nice uh, 20 values he talks about in chapter 13. Amanitvam, Adambitvam, Ahimsa, Akshanti, Rajyam. So this is Manitvam. So we have all kinds of problems. People are not recognizing my work. People are not uh, acknowledging my work. Uh, you know, one, these are all one type. Another type is, I worked with some expectation, didn't, it didn't work out. I am upset now. And I, I am upset so much that I find blame with everything including God. See, these, see, as human beings, we have a very nice uh, attitude. When success comes, you own everything to yourself. I did it. My hard work. See, year after year, I am pained. Year after year, I see these boys who scored, you know, uh, the first rank in CET, JE, first rank, these kinds of things. All these boys says, my hard work. All these boys says, my hard work. Sometimes they say, my parents, my teachers. We also have that habit. When success comes, entirely the credit is mine. I will think twice before giving the credit to you. But when failure comes, the blame is up to God. They say, people are unfair. They, you know, the whole thing, they, they were scheming. They were, you know, planning it such a way that I will fail. I promised one coconut for Ganapati, he, he was bad. So we can go that far. When failure comes, I become, you know, I think the whole world has conspired. When success comes, the whole world never conspired. This is an average thinking for many of us. Right? This is what is, there was a great tennis player who contracted AIDS. Okay? Some blood transfusion or something. So, his, his fans were very upset. But he was a very nice player, African American. Very nice player. So, his fans were very upset. Why you? So, there was a lot of males. Why it happened to you? So, he replied. He said, he said, he actually said to become, a, win a Grand Slam from America. He actually explained the whole thing. He said at level 1, 500,000 people play tennis. So he goes on like that. From there, the next circuit, 50,000 people will come. Then the next circuit, 5,000 people will come. Then ATP, 500 people will come. Like that, he went on explaining. Then he said, when all these happened, I never asked why me. Look at the grace with which he is talking. On the verge of dying, he said this. When so many good things happen to me, I never asked, why me? Why should I ask now? This is a question he asked. I, to me, he, is, he, he must have been a karma yogi. Because these are all what is called, what I call as naishkarmya. Work should not affect us at all. If we can achieve that state, we have won the war in the world of Vyavahara. 
in the world of yavahara of course we have won the war so krishna says that will never happen without starting work so i'll give you a few more nice examples on this which i am very fond of i i actually you know uh, sunil gavaskar started his first test match in oval in 1970 he played his last test match in oval in 1990 and he was so successful in that first uh, tour i think 1000 runs in a ca- calendar year or something all that he was very successful i have read about his first tour i have seen his last match in the oval the sunil gavaskar of 1970 was not the sunil gavaskar of 1990 in 1990 for him cricket was more or less a philosophy or almost a religion of high high ordeals high values i could see it the way he was talking the way he was hanging the boot one day 1970 he was not either he was you know he wanted uh, you know that's the feeling he want to be you know be very productive get more scores be very famous that was not the gavaskar when he retired so what krishna is saying is without starting so if gavaskar hangs the boot the world will take note of him if i say i am going to hang the boot people will laugh at me karma nanam anarambhat karma nanam anarambhat what nice karma i am if i if i announce tomorrow i have decided to hang my boot no more cricket people will admit me in nimhan straight away <laughs> this utter foolishness what i am trying to say work will teach us so there are few things i thought about when i thought about the shloka what will happen if we start doing work this is the question what will happen if we start doing work i felt when you start doing work a few things will happen first of all we become more and more wiser about the work i am coming to a very mundane level i start from there we will become better and better about the work you call it as knowledge you call it as expertise you call it know how whatever you want to use even a person who doesn't know anything if we start doing the work he will become a little wiser so his understanding of the work will become better which may blow his ego and all that can happen that's a different issue but if we keep on doing the work variety of work on which we develop expertise we will become much wiser about ourselves also think about this it it's not only that we are wiser about the work we will become wiser about ourselves i can do this i cannot do this i am capable of doing this much you may tell others or not that's a different issue there is a, a certain wisdom which will develop about us these are inevitable at a very low level i am talking doing work will evolve an individual that's the point i want to make the evolution can be in a material plane to begin with but the evolution can travel it will travel sooner or later so after a long time of diligently doing whatever work we are doing few things can happen we can become an expert in what we do okay we can put realistic value to what i do that sense of realism will dawn in all of us definitely it will dawn in all of us for example i must tell you the first exam i gave when i was 28 years old as a professor I realized that my paper was I set a paper for 90 minutes I think it required about 120 minutes that showed my inexperience Today if I give a talk or if I give a lecture if I write a paper I am on dot more or less I know this is all will go in this one hour how did it come I mean all of us I am using my profession to give an example all of us develop our own understanding expertise realistic value to what we do so not only in that in our life all these engaging in the life is also work please understand so the the wisdom of life will improve the realism in life will improve we call it as gray matter whatever you want to call and a person who is able to get the right attitude to work and then keep going he will also become philosophical about work he will understand work as a deep philosophy not as something which uh, you know gives me a little bit of here and there and so on that's why in chapter 4 in the next chapter krishna said he said sarva karma kilam parte jnane pari samapyate he said all work will lead to knowledge so all work can lead to knowledge can be understood in a vyavaharika plane as well as in a paramarthika plane this is what i am trying to tell you 
work, whatever work we do, must evolve us. So what is he saying here? Na karma nam anarambat naish karmam purushaha shude. What he is saying is work. That is the only way you can evolve. You cannot be saying I will sit, do no work, spend my 60, 70 years like that. You will be good for nothing. You will have neither worldly wisdom nor you will have any wisdom of anything. Wisdom starts with worldly wisdom and then it moves to higher planes. So that is why he says that naish karmya to me is a state in which work does not bother me anymore. Work is like a philosophy. It doesn't bother me anymore. I will do work for the sake of work. I do work because kartavyam iti karniyam. Kartavyam iti karomi. I am doing because it has to be done. I do because it has to be done. That's a very different plane. We have a problem. We are not able to do like that. So if you come back to our normal understanding in many of us, you go and ask any of the youngsters, you ask a little you know, age group of 25 to 45, 50, you ask, what is your goal in work? Why are you working? What is your goal? They will say promo faster promotion. They will say I need uh, you know uh, uh, acknowledgement of sorts. Promotion is one kind of acknowledgement of course. They will say I want better salary, I want a very important position, I want importance, I want... These are all running in the minds. I am by no stretch of imagination saying all these are not required. I am not at all saying that. I am saying these are required. The most important thing that I should ask is I work for 20 years, 30 years. Have I evolved as an individual? What, have, what has happened to me as an individual? Not as a manager, not as a professor, not as a you know housewife, not as a father, not as a mother. They are all kartavyamiti. Karyam. What happened to me as an individual? Have I evolved a bit? So they do career planning. I think we should do career planning even in our <laughs> spiritual. In our spiritual trajectory also we should take stock once in five years. And ask what happened? Did I become any better? <coughs> Ten years back what I was, what I am today, has work taught me valuable things in which I can become a little more evolved. These are all contained in this shloka. That is why na karma namana arambat naish karmam purushaha shrute. Work from that perspective also. That's a very important perspective. Do work so that you become a very evolved individual. The vyaktitva starts blossoming. It is flowering. That question please ask. Ask about promotion. Ask about all that. But then the question is how will vyaktitva flower? That is what all these shlokas are telling us. How will you evolve as an individual when you do work is what all these shlokas are saying. He is only saying it is important here. <coughs> and that's why he says, Nacha Sanyasana Deva Siddhim Samadhi. By running away from work, you have lost an opportunity for self-evolution. By running away from work, if I lost an opportunity for self-evolution, then what, san what Siddhim are you going to? What is this uh, uh, achievement that you are going to have? No achievement. Not possible. By just trading off, you know, uh, spiritual growth with a, with a material growth, you cannot, you know, replace one with the other. And I very jokingly say, if I amass so much money, the only thing you can do is you can die on a golden cart. It's much easier because you can afford. That is okay. That is one dimension, but one cannot replace the other. Every individual, yesterday I talked about it, every individual must evolve. That's why we are born. Janma after Janma, we are on that trajectory. Let's become more aware of it. And understand, Krishna is telling, please understand, work is one dimension with which only you can evolve. So that is all, that's all, what he is saying here. So the message he is saying is by giving up action, by giving up work, you have lost an opportunity to become better as an individual. Don't do that. By giving up work, you can never become better. <coughs> you will become inferior. So that is what I think is the crux of this shloka. So he says, don't give up work. Work is the greatest possibility to evolve. That's what he is saying here. Nahi api Jatu tishtatya karma krita karyate hyavashak karma 
sarva prakriti jayirgunehi so in the earlier shloka 4 he said uh, don't give up work you lost an opportunity to evolve that's what he said in shloka 4 now in this shloka let us see what he is saying first of all he is saying such a possibility does not even exist that's what he is saying here nahi kaschit kshana see kshana is uh, you know 10 power minus 4 second or something correct technical definition of kshana is uh, a fraction of a second actually so he has gone to that level na kaschit kshanam api not even a kshana jhatu tishtati akarma krit nobody can be say to himself that i will be without doing anything you can't even be that like that even for a kshana that's what the first line says so by that what is he saying in the earlier shloka he said work work is the only way by which you can evolve don't give up work now he is saying don't even think you can give up work at all it's not possible it is not at all possible for you to say i will give up work he say it is foolishness if you think like that that's not going to work and then in the second line he says he says prakriti jayi gunaihi this guna that uh, you know the sattva raja uh, th- tamas and uh, these three gunas sattva rajas and tamo gunas which came out of what is called prakriti which came out of maya is all the srishti vada actually the whole origin of universe from there you can actually bring all these concepts so every one of us have a rgb color palette today you want any color use rgb you know then you change the color and red becomes a little pink pink you can make millions of colors each one of us have rgb it's only called srt if you wish sattva raja and tamas that's a color palette god has wired into us the world of multiplicity is srt prakriti jayi gunaihi because each one of us is a unique it's a biometric identification the unique combination of sattva rajas and tamas which make my inherent nature that nature will make sure that you cannot escape from doing a work which is aligned to that nature he says avashah not vashah avashah he 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 the word he is used in sanskrit to emphasize indeed whenever you want to give a stronger punch he is used yada yada hi dharmasya glanir bhavati to give a little punch he is used so he says that you will work you may think that you have a choice that means you are at one level of understanding of this whole notion of work you may think like that but he says karyate hi avashah karma always it is like that your nature is such that you will engage in some work or the other so <coughs> there is a canadian professor is a professor of operations research hardcore math good mathematics operations research and all that i am i am also of that variety actually his name is stafford beer is a canadian this gentleman has read gita so much he is sold on gita so in 1994 he wrote a paper and the paper was written to celebrate the shatabhishega of the greatest personality in operation research called wins you know there was a great person called uh, churchill churchman winston churchman he was a great father of operation research his 80th birthday if you wish there was a special issue which was brought and he wrote a paper the title of the paper this canadian professor stafford beer title of the paper is called loka samasta sukino bhavantu that's the title of the paper written in a over journal sir all english you know mathematics and all that i was stunned when i read that paper in 94 in that paper he has extensively covered chapter 3 and these ideas he gives a very nice example he says he says every day i go to my house is one example he gives there every day i go to my house and every time i pass my neighbor's house he says my house is a little outskirts some two acre big you know so my neighbor is also two acre house so even if you go in a car it takes 30 seconds to pass through and then reach your gate he says every day 
when I pass through the neighbor's uh, house, this dog will bark from that end to this end. And this, he gives an example like that. He says, the dog, say, the dog may think that I have done my work. I have achieved what has to be done for the purpose of my master. It doesn't understand it is its nature. It will keep only doing that. He uses that to explain Ahankara, Vimoda, Atma, Karte, Yamiti, Manyate. There is one sloka, 27th sloka in this chapter which we will see. He explains it with that much detail. So, this notion that I am doing work is a very starter. It is a LKG of understanding the mechanics of work. It is a very deep idea. I will give a few examples. Just to, first of all, please understand, as long as the mind is vibrating, Chanchalatva, which I talked about. As long as the mind is in a state of vibration, you cannot escape from work. The work happens only because of that. You have to think from that direction. If the mind is in peace, the mind is settled, then work will happen which will dissociate itself from me. Guna guneshu vartante iti matva. Dharayana, all that in this chapter, little it is there. If the, first of all, please understand we are all in work because, in fact, if you have to take a guna root, we are all in thick of work because the rajas is very high. Without rajas, rajas is the bedrock of activity. Tamas is the bedrock of inertness. If you don't have tamas, you will never get sleep. We need tamas also because you have to sleep. Because sleep is the greatest, as I have been hearing in some pravachans, Sleep is the greatest thing that uh, this uh, Jagan Mata has given to us. She takes you in her lap, recharge, it's a battery recharge. It recharges you and then releases you with energy the next day. Because nobody is bored. The only thing that we are not bored of is sleeping day after day. Good sleep. For which we need tamas. Rajas, as long as we have a very, you know, dominant rajas, Chapter 14 discusses all this so beautifully in great detail. So, as long as we have rajas, we will be in activity. So, why is it, it is in nature? Your RGB will decide whether you will work or not. Again, I read a story, there was a, you know, I was just reading it. There was a, you know, temple and there was some funds which were all allocated for the temple. And this officer who came, he wanted to have a cast cutting, he looked at it and he said, finally he said, there was one item. He said, there is one sadhu who is doing nothing and this is for him. <coughs> so he said, if he is doing nothing, nothing for him now. So we, the, but the temple man said, no sir, you have to go, why don't you go and meet him? He said, some small something. So this gentleman apparently went to him. He said, you are doing nothing. Therefore, I am cutting all that entitlements that I have to give you because you are doing nothing. He said, alright. Can you do me a favor? Come and sit here for a week and do nothing. Let us see what happens. <laughs> so he said, what is there? Doing nothing is very easy. So he sat, sat there. After half an hour, he started looking at what's happening here. So he, he started uh, more or less trying to explain to somebody, don't do all that. He, Swamiji said, no, no. You are supposed to do nothing. Sit here. Don't do nothing. After two hours, he couldn't sit. He got up and said, please leave me, I am sorry. No, in a, in a very jovial way I am saying, but what I am saying is, each one of us have a nature. I mean, we know all that. I cannot keep quiet when you something says wrong, somebody says wrong. But I will come, I will come and say, today I am not going to open my mouth. So I will come and sit in the meeting. Instead of 5 minutes, it will be 10 minutes. <laughs> Instead of 10 minutes, it may be, if you have so much of uh, little control, it will be 20 minutes. But in 20 minutes, it will compensate for the silence of the first 20 minutes also. We all have our own experiences on that. What I am trying to say, that is what is being told. What he is doing is the state of not doing work is a very fancy idea. Don't even think of a possibility like that. Because the mind vibrates. As long as mind vibrates, it will always compare, it will say this, it will say that, all that. Now what is mind? Somebody explained it so well. As long as you have past tense and future tense, there is mind. In present tense, there is no mind. This is very true. Mind will only try to evaluate what happened and feel sad or good about it. Or mind will dream about what is going to happen tomorrow and develop expectations. That's what mind is. 
and as long as we have a mind which is trained on that it will push us into activity and that activity will be fitting to our nature that is what we will actually do in fact the karya is a function of karana if you have to use it in in this narrow sense of the term the karana is my rgb i am of a certain kind i will do only that i may delay it i may do it little bit here and there but eventually i will come there it's just a matter of time who cannot escape from that that is what he is saying that it is prakriti jayi gunai this gunas actually in a way drives you we think you know why we are making our own decision no that is the reason i told 65 of us are coming and sitting here we could have done 1 million things we could have watched a tv serial we could have played a game we could have spent time with my grandchild i could have spent time with my friend i could have you know taken a thing and then go and see something and come back something is pushing you into a certain thing because there is a certain orientation of rgb which is all dictating moment by moment what we are doing we are not able to see it but it is there if you start seeing it we will start tweaking these three dials because we know for that we know to know what will happen if r is more and g is more and b is more chapter 14 of bhagavad gita gives all those ideas in great detail so that's what uh, he is actually saying here and i am reminded of this beautiful shloka shankaracharya wrote what is called dakshana murti ashtaka is a great psychologist this ashtaka has nine shlokas although it is ashtaka it is has nine shlokas 9 4 lines but many of his shlokas you see dakshana murti stotra there is no dakshana murti there it's all nice ideas he simply used the dakshana murti namami something he will use there is no description of the god or anything most of his shlokas are like that so he starts this dakshana murti stotra with the first line vishwam darpana drishyamana nagari tulyam nija antargatam beautiful statement he says vishwam darpana drishyamana nagari this world is like a darpana mirror this world is like a mirror and what do you see there nija antargatam bahiriva udbhutam he says the vyavahara that you do in the world is you are seeing yourself in the world that's what he is saying vishwam darpana drishyamana nagari tulyam it is equivalent to that but uh, you know what it is it is a way by which you express yourself in the world so you are mirroring yourself that is why i talk to a set of people whom i like and why did i like because my prakriti said this is what i should like we call it in modern english they use the word wavelength or chemistry biology something they use na my chemistry is better my biology is all that they are saying that is what it is all these are prakriti jay gunai ji so he says you will align only with what you are and your world of activity is nothing but your mirror image that is what he is saying in that shloka that is what is being told here so krishna is saying here you cannot give up action because it is not your nature to give up action and the only thing then therefore we can do is we can align to the nature change the nature over time that is okay if we if we think this nature is not all right if we develop that sense of intelligence within us self reflection then the nature cannot be removed the nature can be modified that's all you can do so he has established two important principles now about work without work you cannot evolve you cannot be without work also so now the question naturally boils down to then what do i do now you are not telling me it is not possible to be without work that is why he said in chapter 2 karmanyeva adhikarah ma paleshu kadachana ma karma pala hetur buhu but then he said the last mate sangastu akarman you cannot remain in the society without doing work that explanation is here the explanation for that last quarter you can find here why you cannot remain in the society without work it's not your nature you will pull yourself sooner or later you are not going to keep quiet you know in chapter 3 uh, chapter 2 when arjuna wanted to run away 30th shloka to 38th shloka there are eight shlokas in which very subtly he says don't run away from war you know what will happen you will go 
then first thing Duryodhana will say is this fellow ran away. He is a coward. He ran away. That many possibilities I am saying. One possibility Duryodhana will bad mouth you. All over the place. You know you thought Arjuna is a great warrior, nothing here. He is a fellow just ran away. He is a coward. Or amongst the other kings they will say the whole, uh, you know, see we have this peer pressure, you know, we call this peer pressure. Na? So all the other people will say that, uh, you know, he is no great. We thought he is a great person. Now he gives a few examples like that, you know, Avahita, you know, te, all those people will talk ill of you and all that. You know what he is trying to say? If you run away, next year you will come and anyway fight the war. That's the point he is making. You may run away today. Your nature is you can't take all this. You will feel very upset. So you will only temporarily postpone. You cannot run away. That's the sukshma in that shlokas. You cannot run away. You can temporarily postpone. Twice the vigor you will come back. Why are you waiting? You have because that is your nature. Get into that. That is the explanation uh, he gave in a different way in chapter 2. So these are all being told here. So clearly every one of us have a certain nature which we cannot escape. I think the nature is very, very integral to what we are doing. We cannot escape from that. Therefore that will push us into a certain way of doing things. You cannot be in a state of uh, not working. All these he establishes. So a sensible question now, so the only thing we can do is continue doing work as per that nature. Then if you feel that this is not uh, what I ought to be, change the nature, even that cannot be abrupt. He is trying an abrupt change. Think about it. From a state of being a warrior, he wants to go. That's what I said yesterday. Being a good you know, CEO material, that vasana is very strong. If I go into ashrama, I will create politics there. Because that is what I am good in. Or you know, I will boss around people there. You have to exhaust the vasana. So the change cannot be abrupt. The change can be slow. Shanai shanai uparamed, he said in chapter 6. And, he, and for that answer only he said Abhyasena to Kaunteya Vairagya Use Abhyasa and Vairagya Change the trajectory You can't change abruptly So these are all the messages we have to get out of this shloka We all have our nature We can work around the nature so Because then you will ask is it all I am? No Your nature can be changed But the change will be incremental Change cannot, No change can be abrupt It is a step change slow incremental change that can happen and that for which you should know what type of change I should make these satsangas can give us our self reflection can give us that ideas so all that he is communicating through saying that prakriti jai gunaihi karya te avashaha so we have to be very aware of this in our vyavaharika also we should do it in our paramarthika also we should do it it's a change it's a nature that we have to understand and then keep changing. That's the only path for evolution, for which we need the work anyway. Then he goes on. Now then question is, what will happen if I divorce myself from my nature? That question can be asked now. You say all of us have a nature, but I will divorce myself from the nature. This is my nature, but I will do something else. What will happen if such a thing is attempted? So Sri Krishna is getting there. Karme Driyani Samyamya Yahaste Manasasmaran Indriyatan Vimudatma Mityacharasa Uchyate. So now the next question that comes is what will happen if I am misaligned? When I say misaligned, what I mean is, this is my nature, but I want to do that. I am a warrior, I want to be a sannyasi. It's a, it's a matter of convenience, I want to run away. Yesterday I said, occasions in life, I want to run away. Going is not good in my family, going is not good in my office, going is not good in my neighborhood, I want to run It's a matter of convenience in which you want to go away from your you misalign yourself from your nature. That can happen. Krishna says, 
let us see what happens so he says karmendriyani these karmendriyas see look at here whatever we do in the world whatever we do the process is as follows signals have to come in from the outside world it's called stimulus and response has to happen whether you attend a meeting you give a talk you tell a stotra you you know uh, do something to somebody this is the basic fundamental principle you get stimulus you get response the stimulus comes th comes through what is called jnana indriya jnana indriya is the apparatus which picks up all the signals i hear somebody saying there is only a signal now i have to process to get upset or be happy that's a different question you have to matra sparsha asta kaute so is it this pancha tanmatras are in touch with the outside world through which signals will come that is called jnana indriya now the mind will process and order this is to be done that is executed by what is called karma indriya so the world of action is done through karma indriya for which an input is required which is coming through jnana indriya a processing is required a ceo is required to dispose of the decision that is the manas the processing has chitta buddhi and ahankara which is a memory table and then process cpu and all that that's how it happens so he says you restrain your karma indriyas when your mind is used to processing and giving an output in a particular way that is your nature prakriti jayu gunai you think only in a particular way you cannot think suddenly differently incrementally you can think differently you are like this so you are like this so this is the way you should do now what you do is you restrain yourself from doing it so karmendriyani samyamya yah aste that person remains in that state but then his mind is not uh, you know cooperating now because mind is prakriti jayi gunaihi so what it is it is doing manasa smaran manasa smaran what indriya artha indriyasya artha the raw material for indriyas that is a world of objects world of signals world of entities world of events which are happening around me which comes through the jnana indriya that's a indriya artha so the raw material for the objects are still wired to my mind because i am that nature so i am thinking about it but i am not executing like that why karma indriyani samyamya i am restraining my organs of action but my organs of knowledge and my organs of processing is not changed i am thinking about it all the time okay if such a thing happens he says he is a vimudatma first of all he is a muda he is a sort of an idiot in some ways because he has not understood that the nature is such misalignment will be automatically corrected you cannot be in a state of misalignment for too long it can be temporary now you you want examples for that there are plenty of examples 5 6 days i am in a you know i am in a state of dieting monday through saturday dieting sunday i will compensate all the 6 days <laughs> because my desire to my desire to eat has not gone please understand doctor told me diet doctor told change your lifestyle say heavy words they use lifestyle change is uh, you know a lifetime of preparation so all these doctors talk vedanta very nicely now they say lifestyle change is required which means you have to train your mind lifestyle change is not jogging for half an hour so dieting some youngsters also i find them they diet and then one day the balloon bursts that day they really compensate they say let's get the hell out of it this is what will happen so the six days of diet is mithyachara you are so weird you are artificially doing something which you cannot hold for yourself so i will you know uh, i will maintain to oh, this uh, ekadashi vrata is another all the time i am vrata i am thinking of the nice food you know jalebi this you know samosas and uh, you know uh, you have this uh, parotas and uh, all nice things all the time thinking as bad luck would have it you also have some of that also so karma indriyani samyamya manasa indriyani so if if you are not able to that manasa part if you are not able not able to address 
then what will happen is two things will happen. I will actually either give up this upavasa or I will eat without your knowing. Something I will have to do now. <laughs> Otherwise it is difficult. Please understand it is difficult. I have a genuine problem. I have to solve it. So that is what uh, it is. So he says it is mithyachara. Hypocrisy. Now I will tell you another hypocrisy which bothers me a lot. This country is full of hypocrisy according to me. Every people go to Ganges, bring one bottle of Ganges and do puja in their house. It's very, very holy. Look at the river. River is polluted to the, to the core. When we go there, we contribute our part to pollution anyway. So we manage life, we manage experiences, value systems, ideas, what is good, what is right, everything in compartments. If you manage things in compartments, that is called misalignment. What is misalignment? Morning to evening I will say corruption spoils my country. Tomorrow morning I will go to Tasildar's office and give 5,000 rupees. <laughs> Sometimes we end up doing that. So this is the misalignment. So the important message that Krishna gives here is misalignment will lead to hypocrisy, hypocritical behavior. Please don't do that. And what is the misalignment? Misalignment is the misalignment between thoughts, deeds and action. That's what he call it as Arjavam. In chapter 13 he used the word Arjavam. Arjavam is Rujbhava. Ruj means straight, not curved. That's why it's called Arjuna. His arrows will be straight. It's called Arjuna because Rujbhava. Rujbhava is Arjava. Straight, straightforward thinking. Now, what is take over thinking? I should be able to think which is aligned to my nature because that is what I am. If you think that is not correct, then start changing that. So, hypocrisy will develop if you are misaligned from your nature. So, please don't do that. That's what he is saying. Work according to your nature because it is not only hypocrisy, sooner you will come there. That's why it is hypocrisy. You said you believed in it, but you never believed in it. You ended up there finally. That's why it is hypocritical in that sense. So the whole question now boils down to developing a right kind of nature. So the whole thing has moved to a different plane now. You have to develop the right nature of yourselves. Then work can evolve all that. Nakarmanam, Anarambak, Naishkarmam, all that will happen. So the discussion must shift to what are all the things I should do so that my nature will become better. We need some good inputs on that. The rest of the chapter gets into ideas which tells us how we must actually do things. So, uh, if there are any questions, we can stop here or I can take another 5 minutes and stop. Uh, can I take another 2-3 minutes and maybe we can see? Yeah, it's 19, uh, 7.50 but I will take another 5 minutes then. So, the counterpart of that is what happens when you are aligned to your nature and your nature is also good. Nature becomes better. You are able to slowly change. Incrementally understand this is the right kind of a thing I should do. If you go to that status, what will happen? That's what he is saying here. Yes, yes, tvindriyani manasa niyam yarabhate arjuna karme driyair karma yogam so, first of all, he says, if we are aligned, we should be aligned on the right direction, that he is going to talk a little later. We are assuming now we are aligned in the right, in an appropriate direction in which we have to align. If we align like this, then what happens is, the mind is pacified, the mind is reconciled now. The mind is reconciled. So, manasa niyamya, indriyani manasa niyamya, which means as signals come from outside, you tweak your nature in such a way that you are able to reconcile to saying these things I should not bother too much. Things will come and go. Agama paina anitya, they will come and go. If you develop that state of mind, the chanchalatva is coming down. So, manasa indriyani niyamya. Arabate, edi arabate, he Arjuna, if you, if you engage in work in which the outside signals do, does not perturb you too much, 
your, your mind is a little settled if you are able to go there then that work you do through your karma indriya karma indriya is actually karma yoga so he is defining what is karma yoga what is karma yoga karma yoga is one in which as you engage in work the work and the related things does not bother me anymore the mind is at peace manas samadhana mind is in a state of you know nischala not chanchala it's nischala which means events will not bother me anymore events will not affect me anymore i have to do work that's why i'm doing work this requires this response let me do that this job requires this response therefore let me do that that is a very high way of evolving in doing work he says if you do like that he says that is karma yoga that is exactly karma yoga and saha visishyate he is bound to excel so excellence is not in terms of material gains excellence is that that is friends we have peaceful sleep at the end of the day every day we have to have a peaceful sleep at the end of the day i can't bother about things and have struggle for sleep and then disturb myself i should be able to say i have done my work i will sleep now i am satisfied i have that sense of fulfillment and that will come when indriyani manasa niyamya karmendriyehi arabate you engage in the world of work in which the mind says let me be a little settled if we able to go to that kind of a nature to which we can you know develop ourselves he says you will become a karma yogi so now arjuna has to ask whether he measure up to this that is the question he has to ask is he measuring up to this is his mind bothered about events that are happening outside if his mind is too much bothered about events happening outside he is not at there he is still not at there no i again you know some of these ramana maharishi quotings are very interesting ramana maharishi says pain is different from suffering pain is a matter of chemistry and biology and your medicine you take a knife and then tear my skin it should pain blood must come it should pain until the wound is closed that is called pain should i suffer should i say the whole world is so unkind to me i have been a good person this happened to me these are all called suffering suffering is your choice pain is not at all your choice pain is prakriti vishesha pain is prakriti vishesha if i fall from a from a stool from a height i should break my head i break my hand that is prakriti but having broken my hand should i you know get into depression that is my choice so suffering is my choice pain is not my choice a, a person who has understood this difference is closer to being a karma yogi because his mind says i am not bothered with all these let it happen it has to happen let it happen so that is what he is saying here so the first clue he says is detached attachment to work i will explain it in a little detail tomorrow i have used a special word called detached attachment to work so we have to know what is attachment what is a detachment which we will continue tomorrow she wants to ask a question so we will ask please please put down the your hat Maybe one or two questions will take time. Then we'll take it tomorrow. If there is many. Yeah, you ask her. I don't want to disappoint her. She uh, wants to ask a question. Please. Yeah. You are a great storyteller. Hmm. I want to ask you a question. You are telling great stories about God. Then, then who is the creator of God? Uh, God is the creator of human beings. Then who is the creator of God? <laughs> Very good. Wonderful question. <laughs> there is a nice story for that also <laughs> the creator of god is himself or herself god is we do not know whether god is he or she or it but the creator of god i'll tell you another story have you seen a spider yes do you know spider makes a nice uh, web. web no yes where is it making the web from from its own body do you know that it spits its own material but the whole body is created by god 
no no wait 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 so the spider spider created its own its house by itself do you agree with that who created spider we'll talk later okay the spider created its own house it created its own being correct in the same way god created created his own his self or herself and then he created all of us understand wonderful very nice ಸಹನೋಭುನಸ್ತು ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣಾರ್ಪಣಮಸ್ತು ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಚರಣಾರವಿಂದಾರ್ಪಣಮಸ್ತು ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಹರಿ ಓಂ 